You kind of had your first call back in December of mm -hmm. last year. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, so I was in hospital on some IV treatment because um, uh, I picked up a cold and that turns into a chest infection. Um, so I was in bed at quarter past midnight, asleep on the ward. Um, and you don't sleep particularly well on the ward just because there's beeping and noises and things around. And my phone went off um, and at first I ignored it. Um, because I thought it was a prank caller at quarter past midnight and I was half asleep so I wasn't making good decisions um, and they rang again and they'd left a voicemail um, and it, I suddenly realised, like my heart jumped and I suddenly thought, oh my goodness, this might actually be a transplant call but because it had been so long since I'd been on the list and not had a call yet I'd, I'd lulled myself into a sort of false sense of security that, I don't know, maybe it just wouldn't happen and so when it eventually dawned on me that that's my, that might be what it was, my adrenaline kicked in um, uh, and I rang them straight back um, and talked to them. Unfortunately, um, because I was in hospital on treatment, they felt it wasn't right for me to go up and, um, and try for the transplant to see if the lungs were possible um, because it might have be, a height, be a heightened risk for me to have a transplant if I was infected. So I didn't go actual day my infection levels were under 50 which is one of the markers they use to see how, how poorly I am um, they were actually only around 40 45 um, but uh, Newcastle would normally accept if you were under 50 um, but that conversation at quarter past midnight happened so quickly um, neither myself or the person on the other end of the phone had a con the conversation didn't go sort of what are your infection levels or maybe I'll talk to a, a doctor and just check so unfortunately it didn't happen um, but that's okay that's sort of part of that was my first call um, I think organ donation is really important um, it's a difficult subject because obviously it's about death and when your life is over giving life to someone else and I think that's one of the most amazing things you can do for someone um, I Certainly, get, I've ticked the box to say if there's any bits of me that are any good at the end, please just let someone else use them. Um, one, once you're gone, you, you don't need them. Uh, and so, if someone else can use them, I think for me that it's kind of that simple. Um, so, I would say do it. Um, I understand that can be really hard for families, um, particularly as it can often be at a time when you're not expecting it. It's, it's often when you've not necessarily been ill, it might be an accident or something like that, so the shock of it can be really hard to come to terms with, um, and it's sort of the last thing on your radar at that point. But I think if you've thought about it, for you and your loved ones, before that happens, then it's much easier for you to accept that actually that would be a really good thing to do. What does it do? <laughs> it, it convulses the air around the machine around my body so that it shakes me it, that's literally what it's doing it's shaking me so that then it makes me cough and also my voice like this 